Freedom Radio app. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. What a beautiful people. Eddie Nicholas here. Welcome to 91.6 FM Capital Radio. We are so glad that you have decided to come and join us. What is going on in the world of music today, Mr. Cruz? It's always a flutter. The news <laughs> world is always a flutter with music business news. But first, I want to let our listeners and our viewers know that the Freedom Radio Hour is here not only giving you fantastic music, but we like to keep you abreast of the latest in terms of music business news mm-hmm. and trends from around the globe. the globe. This week is very interesting topic. There's a, a bit of an old story, but I think what we have a spin on now is a, a new take on it. So first thing I want to talk about is um, a recent story related to two of house music's biggest names. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Eddie and I are into house music, but we like our house music soulful with vocals a little slower in tempo, not so fast. And these two juggernauts are really running things in house music. That is Osunlade from Yoruba Records mm-hmm. and Monique Bingham. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has her own label called Bigger Sound. But she, you know, Monique Bingham has been around for a long time and so has Osunlade. Mm-hmm. Well, a couple of months back, um, for those that are unaware, Osunlade was booked to play in South Africa. Okay. He had done so many times before, but when he arrived, this time he brought his mother. And what he says is that he experienced, um, and he had a really negative experience mm. with his mother. Evidently, um, there was some racism that he experienced. Mm-hmm. There was some, um, any sort of isms or problems, no, minute, oppression. I don't remember reading it. Maybe I didn't read the full article. I didn't know he took his mother with him. Well, bless, his, bless your heart, Osalande. Yeah, yeah, because he had been there for a few times, but evidently he took his mother. And, um, and, and allegedly they, they had an ex- a negative experience in South okay. Africa where they experienced racism. There were some words that were exchanged, and so he had a terrible time there. And so he drafted this whole uh, social media post okay. to say that he was not going to return to South Africa, that he claimed that uh, some of the South Africans were quote-unquote sheep, mm-hmm. and that they were uh, allowing this bigotry and this racism to continue on in that area without rising up and fighting mm-hmm. it. Um, and so he put that out there, and he dis- he asked us in the world to boycott uh, any sort of travel to South Africa, namely because of this negative experience mm-hmm. that he's had. Uh, I bet if you went on social media and you typed in Osunlade South Africa, it will come up because it's been reported now uh, several by several outlets. Okay, okay. But, um, but in response to that, Monique Bingham, who has a brand new album out, it's called The Best of the Last. And what Monique has done is she spent many, many, many years traveling back and forth from the U.S. to South Africa, building her base. And she has developed a, quite a bit of super fans. Those okay. are the artist super fans that are deep deep and they connect deeply with the artist so for monique bingham's case they went out and they bought her new album they bought a ticket to the new show she's done the rounds for radio uh done quite a bit of publicity um so shout out to monique bingham on on all fronts but she did uh respond to osunlade's uh post okay and she basically chastised him for among other things allowing this uh the statement of let's boycott south africa to come out of his mouth okay her neck her experience on the contrary is very positive to Osunlade's negative experience. And she thinks that it's foolish to try to boycott uh, a country when the problems are systemic within it. And the, and and she also chastised him for leaving South Africa and then playing in Amsterdam, which, ha- which has had its own histories, according to uh, Monique Bingham's post. Okay. So she basically, con- they kind of came back for each other. But the story isn't this. Um, the story is about what you do as an artist when you haven't traveled to a place or even if you've been there before you know how we have a technical writer that's uh, that explains okay i need certain kind of equipment mm-hmm. if i'm a dj i need certain kind of equipment to play at this uh location overseas i need a uh, certain kind of drinks i need okay. certain kind of whatever you need a technical mm-hmm. writer it's what it's called uh, but i wonder given a situation like the osunlade south africa situation ought there uh, should there ought to be a, a a sort of cultural writer what do i mean by that i mean not only getting insights into what you need technically in order to be to deliver a quality gig mm-hmm. but to get a semblance what's going on of what's going there. on over there mm-hmm. what do you think of that you th- okay let's put it into context what what's happening in the world let's say you get booked in syria mm-hmm. and i know it sounds crazy but um these are the things that happen well no it's not because if i'm not mistaken one of our counterparts just left the middle east um, the young man from Chicago, 
Um, really? Oh, oh my God, 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 God. His name will come to me. Okay, but he's but just he come back a, from the Middle East. He did a record um, that Louis Vega put out. Oh, excellent. Um, John Pierce. Oh, John Pierce. Shout he out was, to John he Pierce. He was Love just him. over somewhere in that part of the country, or maybe I'm wrong, but I know what he's in the Middle East, or he may have even been to where we're broadcast at today. And so wow. I'm not sure, but he was over there. Well, we're going to take a break, and I want to ask Eddie what his thoughts were uh, when he read John Pierce's uh, experience in the Middle East. Shout out to John Pierce. Let's take a break. When we come back, where? 91.6 Capital Radio. Freedom Radio Hour. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, beautiful people, and welcome back to 91.6 FM Capital Radio. My name is Eddie Nicholas, and I'm here with my fantastic co-host, Adam Cruz, and uh, we're live and direct on the Freedom Radio Hour. Uh, we were just talking about what's some of the climate when mm-hmm. you travel around as an artist. What are some of the things you should look for? Now, we we obviously know there's a technical writer. That's the, mm-hmm. the sheet that indicates the kind of equipment what you, you need want. to play. Uh-huh. If you're a performance artist, what kind of microphone, the things you need ahead of time, those kinds of things. But what we're talking about now is the recent experience, the negative experience mm-hmm. that Osorade, uh, one of our house music's finest, had overseas in South Africa when he went. Uh, it wasn't his first time, but um, he hadn't been there in a while. Or he, had, excuse me, he had never gone there with his parent. Uh, evidently, he brought his mother. Uh, but what I was suggesting is maybe there should be a cultural writer, mm-hmm. you know, so you get a semblance of what happened. So I was uh, asking Eddie, if you were booked in the Middle East, say a country like Syria, which is uh, dealing with a hotbed of issues right now, what do you require to know before you get there? And then Eddie retorted that uh, one of our own in-house music, John Pierce, just came back from the Middle East. So what did John have to say? Well, I didn't see where he wrote anything, but I know that according to the little snippets that he shared and the pictures that he shared, he had a wonderful time. He went over there for like three months. Wow. And, and if I'm not mistaken, he might still be over there. I'm not sure. Okay. But I know he was over there for quite some time. Mm. So he was over there getting into making his money and doing right. fantastic doing thing. things. Oh, that's wonderful. I think uh, if it were me, I would want to know uh, is there security at where I'm going? Mm-hmm. Is, is the venue, is it prone to threats and things like mm-hmm. that? Uh, because uh, while I wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't have any sort of feelings about traveling most anywhere, I would want to know whether the venue I'm going to uh, is prone to threats. Like, perha- like for example, in just the recent Paris attacks, uh, are we, our thoughts are with you and with Kenya and with Beirut and all of the mm-hmm. bombings around the world. Um, but in, in the case of the Paris attacks, one of the targeted areas was a concert hall. Mm-hmm. So that could have easily been a DJ uh, set type of venue. It could have been anything. So I think it's important to know uh, some of the background. What do mm-hmm. you think? Well, you know, me personally, if I had the opportunity, which I trust we all shall one day, mm-hmm. to travel abroad, you want to travel abroad because you do want to learn other cultures. You want to learn other ways of thinking. You want to go and you want to hear new sounds. Exactly. And you want to bring all of that back. Uh, with me, you know, I definitely have to do the homework because I know, again, countries like Syria, they're going through a whole thing, they're bunch of stuff. Right. And, you know, um, I could say a lot, but I'm going to leave it alone. Yes. Um, but... People are going to be people. People have their traditions. People have their religions. You know, we're all cross crossing each other in a territory where certain things don't work. I know, first thing, I would definitely find out where my American embassy was with any of these places that I That's would right. travel to. Because the one thing I would definitely want to know for myself is once I get there, if something goes down, can I get my behind airlifted up on out of there? That's a really good point. I think <laughs> I would want to know that. I would want to know, um, like I said, the security measures for mm-hmm. the area. Am I going to get be able to get in and out quickly? Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of thing. But I also don't want to live in fear. No. And I, I want to kind of go with the, I, whenever I do play or been lucky to play somewhere, I try to just bring my best foot forward and try to just come at it with peace and, and do the best I can, you know, but we, we have to be vigilant in this time that we live in. It's important to understand the places that we travel to. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk about some of the super fans that Monique was, was building in South Africa uh, regarding her latest project. And what happens now, there's, remember last time or in the last couple of episodes, we were talking about one particular music streaming service that was trying to go public, mm-hmm. meaning that, he, uh, that the company was going to become a, a publicly traded company in the stock market. Mm-hmm. The company's called Deezer. They had to scrap their their plans to go public um, for several reasons that they won't disclose, but one of which certainly is the impact that this latest report from our Wall Street analyst uh, did around the music business. And they said that while the music business isn't losing money, it certainly isn't gaining 
money either. But out of these studies now, others have come out. Mm -hmm. And one company uh, in particular called MIDIA, I want to call it Mydia or Media, um, they conducted their own study because you're going to see a lot of this now mm -hmm. because people want to really understand, is there money really to be made? Are these Wall yes, Street it is. analysts, are these Wall Street analysts, do they know what they're talking about? You're saying yes, there is. Yes, Where? there is. Uh, by doing what they're doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's making money. Let's not get, let's not get but, it. <laughs> well, talk about it. In your opinion, what do you think What do you think that they're doing to make this money? To me, it seems like a no-brainer. They are getting on a computer, probably typing in a whole bunch of numbers and all of this stuff, and coming up with some figures to justify what they're saying. Right. I can't see any of these people actually going into these clubs and walking up to a you. Sir, can I get your reasoning on why you choose right. streaming services. They may do some of that, but I actually think everything is done online. Yeah. They go at a, a certain percentage space, and then they put those numbers in, and some of them, they may be justified up. You know, you add a little just to get your findings to say what you want right. to say, and then they come out with these findings. No, people are not making more money in the record industry, and again, the people that are making the money are the people that are doing these bogus studies mm -hmm. to justify why the music business is not making money. They're not coming up trying to come up with solutions. They're coming up with ways that they can make money. That's very interesting. We're going to break this down a little further. Let's take another break. When we return on the Freedom Radio Hour, we're going to break down this study and what they're saying is the difference between an artist mm -hmm. super fan and a streaming super fan. It's actually quite fascinating. We'll take a break. I love Eddie's uh, roll eye, though, because I, I do feel <laughs> where he's coming from. Let's take a break. Right here, where? 91.6 FM Capital Radio. Freedom Radio Hour. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to 91.6 FM. I'm one of your co-hosts, Eddie Nicholas, and I'm so glad that you decided to come and spend time with us. I got my buddy over here, and we were just talking about, you said something about super fans and streaming yes. super fans. So, there's and a, so now that the Wall Street analysts have come out with their initial findings, which is that... Um, there's not a net growth in the music industry. In mm -hmm. other words of saying, it's not losing money, but it's not making money either. Now you're going to see a lot of other studies that come out to either combat that or support that argument. Uh, one of which just came out recently from a company called MIDIA. I don't know if it's Mydia or Media, but either either way, they've conducted their own study to to really dive into what mm -hmm. people are, how they're consuming music, not how necessarily how much they're consuming, mm -hmm. but how they're consuming the music. So I, I found this kind of fascinating because their study of amongst its many findings really broke down two different things. There's remember back in the day there used to be the super fan. I I definitely claim to be a super fan of Janet Jackson. And that you are. Yes. Every <laughs> since I was a little boy, I was always been into Janet Jackson, so I would buy the she CD. That much older than you now. Come well, on. listen, I would buy the CD, I would buy the vinyl, I would buy the mixes, I would buy the single, I would buy the maxi single, I would buy the video, I would go to the concert, mm -hmm. I would buy the T-shirt. I was, I'm, I still am a super fan of Janet. So anything that she comes out with, including this latest album, I've only, I'm not only purchased a digital download, but I've purchased the CD and the vinyl and T-shirt, which mm -hmm. should be coming momentarily. And he'll get alerts when she does concerts. That's right. Right, and I've already purchased a concert ticket for the next tour uh, in preparation. So I'm a super fan of an artist, Janet Jackson, mm -hmm. right? And so that was sort of the traditional model. And record labels, knowing there were people like me all over the world, really build a business around marketing and promoting to us super fans. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we were doing a bunch of things. We weren't just buying all of the different products and different mediums, but we were also spreading the word and influencing other people to get into the mm -hmm. artists too. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people, knowing that I'm such a Janet fan, got into Janet too because I was so into her. Well, you know, as soon as I saw her, she um, was coming back out with a concert, I tagged you. Yes, I know you tagged me. I know you tagged me on that. And I always need to know about uh, stuff regarding Janet because mm -hmm. I love her. But um, what they're studying now, this company, MIDIA, was uh, the difference between the artist super fan, which is what I just described, mm -hmm. and what they're talking about is a streaming super, super fan. fan. There's a difference. Okay, so in, in the streaming super fan scenario, these are the people that are really into casual listening. That means they pay for the Spotify and the other subscription service, and they let the music choices happen for them. And this they call it the shuffle age. And what's happening now is people 35 and older are becoming more casual listeners to anything that will come through in the shuttle and the shuffle uh, of the music that they're listening to. So what does that mean? That the streaming super fan wants to stream music all the time in the background or what have mm -hmm. you and is listening to a wider range of musics that they know and that they don't know. And they want to do that all day long. 
The problem with the streaming super fan is that they're also fleeting. So while they have a wider variety of genres that they're into because they're just letting the player play, they also are fleeting, meaning that they're not diving into, say, like I do with Jed and mm -hmm. Jackson. They're kind of fleeting with their uh, loyalty mm -hmm. regarding the artist. They're more into the, the streaming experience itself. Okay. Do, you, do you experience that? Because I have to think about it. When I when I do this, I go deep into the rabbit hole with YouTube searching. I love to search concerts. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. So I'll look for vintage concerts. Bob Marley, for mm -hmm. example. Mad Madonna or Janet. And um, I'm, I find myself spending a lot of time... Uh, when I have the free time looking at concerts on YouTube and I'm there for a long time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You know, I'm like you. I don't really subscribe to any of these streaming um, medias. Um, but you are on YouTube. Yes, I'm on YouTube. Um, because, again, YouTube, you see visual. Yes. It's not just hearing. You see a visual. And a lot of times, these concerts are concerts that have just been previously been performed. And you have not had the opportunity to spend your money and your ticket. But you can go on YouTube and see that very same concert. And sometimes a little more close up because the cameras are right there in those artists' That's right. face. That's and right. then you have millions of people. And I'm one of those, too. When I have my little camera with me, trust me, I'm videotaping or recording something who have shared all of their experience That's so you're right. getting a wide variety of visual and hearing senses right. when you go on to youtube whereas when you go to these services that just basically stream music to me that's just i'm getting on the elevator and the music is playing but the, i think the, the finding is saying that they need it on so it needs to be running it needs yeah. to be happening and it, like elevated music continuously runs when right. you go in the supermarket it continuously right. runs and something may come more across you that has you tapping your foot and singing right. a song or but you're going, not clinching on to find out what it is where to it, get it and I, taking me back down memory lane while i'm shopping in the meat <laughs> aisle you know and i'm saying well wow I said, well, you know, this station is really carrying <laughs> on but have i went and subscribed to that station no, no. <laughs> because again with as much music as we all get that comes through us. You know, you and I get a lot of music because we're artists and we're producers, so we're all the time getting stuff sent to us. That's right. Or, you know, people want you to check this out. So you're checking out some of everything. Me, am I one of these persons who's a super fan of anybody? No, I'm not a super fan. Wait a minute, no pause. I, I argue differently. You might not be an artist. You might not be a super fan of, say, one artist, but I would argue that you're a super fan of a genre of music called house music. Yeah, well, that I am, because when people start talking to me about R&B and all this other stuff, I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't listen to that. I don't know who this artist is. Right. My students who I teach connect me to what's going on today, and... Mr. Cruz, <laughs> you know, if you have heard, and you probably have because you have two young daughters. Yeah, I do. The type of music that those kids listen to than what we grew up with is so vastly, vastly different. The dance but that's the new that's the mm -hmm. new super fan now where they're into like these subgenres of music that that um that supersedes say like one particular artist. That's all the time we have today. But we want to spend more time in future episodes breaking down more of this business because Yeah we gotta get back to this subject. I love like yes, this because subject. this one right here is where the future of music is. Mm -hmm. Yes, we were talking about streaming music like Spotify and Deezer, but when we're talking about YouTube, that is the future. If you mm -hmm. go to freedomradiohour.com, we have a lot of articles that we're posting about the future of music consumption, and it includes a very it has a very stronghold on video streaming, which we all know is YouTube. Mm -hmm. So people are discovering not only videos on YouTube, but they're listening to music that is being streamed on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And unless something drastic happens that forces YouTube to change the way that they allow media and music to be put up on there we're okay we have a venue and a vehicle to go and find these things right. because we know many of them have had to take stuff down or they put restrictions or they block you right and sharing. we want to get to a better place where we can monetize this better for the artists that you're that you're listening to while you stream thank you so much for listening to the freedom radio hour check out freedomradiohour.com post under everything we're posting we want to hear what you have to say definitely check out eddienicholas.com brand new mm -hmm. single one time we have the do you want to dance ep coming shortly yours truly adam cruz the freedom lp is out right now go to freedomradiohour.com and djadamcruz.com for the latest have a great weekend and a great week. We'll see you next time. Peace out. 91.6 FM Capital Radio.